Okay, so today's project is going to be getting the starter disassembled so I can get it sandblasted, painted, and rebuilt. There's not a whole lot to these things, however there are a couple intricacies in them. And one thing I'm going to go ahead and note on this, this is a 12 volt diesel starter. So there's going to be four field windings in here instead of just two like you would have on a 6 volt starter. And really about the only difference in, in those is going to be how the brushes are going to attach to them. And of course, you know, you got four, so you got twice as much to work with here. But I'm going to actually unbolt mine so I can sandblast this. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to show you how to do it if you want to. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start tearing this thing down. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take off our Bendix. And back here on the very end of it, you'll see a pin. You're going to have to grab the end of the Bendix and pull it down and drive that pin out. So I just used my hammer just to kind of break it free. And then I pulled it down and just drove it out with the punch. And there's the pin. And we'll pull the Bendix off. Now on this Bendix, if you spin it, like if you're looking at the gear and you spin it counterclockwise, it'll ratchet. If you spin it clockwise, it's going to want to come out. And that will lock in place if you turn it too far. Now, once you start your tractor, and your tractor kicks and it'll spin it backwards, but until that point, it's kind of difficult to deal with. So now that our Bendix is off, you can see how much plays in that one. So the thrust washers are probably wore out. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the band off of it. This one actually has some gaskets on it right here. I've never seen one with gaskets on it. The starter might have never been tore apart. Which of course this thing's almost 60 years old now. So this stuff's just going to disintegrate on me. Tell you what though, I might try and duplicate that, putting it back together. Well, these brushes are toast. I'm surprised this tractor started with this starter. <laughs> Definitely in need of an overhaul. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get this end plate off. That's just these two big long through bolts. Okay. Then we'll go pull this back cover off. We have a bushing in here that'll be changed. And then right here is our first thrust washer.
and rebuild kit has new thrust washers in it which I'll, I'll go over all that in detail once I start rebuilding it but you can see how wore out that one is And you can see my four field coils in here for the 12 volt starter. So now when you pull this one off, your brushes will come with it and the other ones are going to fall out. So just be aware of all that. Because this one, nothing's attached to it. But this one, stuff will move. I got a screw right here that's going to be a ground. So we'll go ahead and take that out and pull the screw out. And then I should have one 180 degrees out from it for the other brush. Those are very tight, so be sure you got a good quality screwdriver. Okay. So now that I have this plate kind of off, what's holding me up now are these brushes for my field coil. So to get those out, about the easiest way to do it is just to come in here and lift off these springs that are holding the brushes in. And then you gotta feed the brush back through the brush plate to release the brush. We're gonna lift this brush spring up here which this is the other one for the field coil and you may have to come in here a little bit and kind of spread these little fingers that's holding the springs kind of just depends on if you can get it to slide out or not And slide that through the brush retainer and there's our brush plate now the spec on these things according to the service manual is if they're less than five sixteenths to replace them well I mean who's measuring these if you're going this far you're replacing them anyway that one's pretty good and wore down And these two here are the ground brushes. These are the easiest ones to change because they just bolt on. These other ones are gonna have to basically be soldered in. We have another bushing right here. And then we have two more springs that held the ground bushings on. We'll go ahead and remove them. So this plate's ready for cleanup. Now out here, these four dowels have an insulator around them. So whenever you blast this or clean this up, be aware of that. And hopefully they will not deteriorate too bad on you and keep your field brushes insulated from your case. Because if you don't, this will short out. Okay, so now the next thing to come out is going to be the armature. 
and since we're not permanent magnet, it'll slide out nice and easily. Right here on my commutator bars on my armature is a lip, because this thing's been wore pretty well. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of cleanup on this to make it reusable. So now, the only thing left in our starter case is gonna be where our positive battery terminal comes in and our field coils. Go ahead and remove your bolt, or not your bolt, but your nut and your washer off of your stud. Rebuild kit will come with a new stud. And it's a good thing because this one is really wore, almost to the point of being stripped. On this particular starter, and the reason I'm saying this one's because it's just been a while since I've done a six volt. This stud has a big bar that comes into it for your field coil. So you'll have to at least remove one field coil to change this bolt out. And speaking of these field coils, they're held on with these square headed bolts. Now it looks like a quarter inch, however if you take a quarter inch ratchet, it is really sloppy. This is a 5 16 square drive socket. It is extremely tight. And as you see, I have actually sanded this down to make it fit because a 5 16 is too large. As you can get a 5 16 socket Grind the edges down, just enough to make it fit. Mine wanted to fit really well there a minute ago. Take you a hammer. Tap it in until it's good and solid. And these bolts are Pretty tight. Mine is actually trying to round out. So I may have to come in here with a torch and heat this up to get that one to break free. See if I can get one of these other ones to come loose. Which, to be honest, if you have an impact driver with a 3 8 square on it, that may do a better job of getting these out versus trying to use a ratchet. Yep, because these are wanting to round out, so I'm going to have to heat these up. Now be aware, these field coils are wrapped in a fiber paper, which can catch on fire. So don't put too much heat there. Okay, so I have an impact driver, but it was a half inch, so I had to put an adapter on it. So now I got a little bit of heat in here. Okay. And if you've never seen an impact driver, basically as you hit it, it turns. But those work really great on screws. So there's one bolt out. And then you're going to have this iron piece. I think it's iron. It might be steel. But it's going to fall out. And that's actually what the screw bolts into. This field coil here 
is now loose. However, you have to take them all loose and pull them out as a unit. So let's go to the next one here. Like I said, I'm just going to add a little bit of heat just to help, and then we'll impact it out. There it finally goes. All right. So there's all four screws out and all four holders. I don't really know what the proper term is for them. Now we should be able to come in here since it's hot as all get out. So I have this little insulator here and the filled coal. Right here's the stud, it was in the field coil, it's right here. So I'll be sure to put that back. So I can tell you from the looks, it looks like I'm gonna have to just go ahead and unsolder that terminal. This stud has a slot in the bottom of it, and you'll see solder all around it. You should be able to liquefy that solder and then pull that terminal free. Okay, so let me try the torch. See if I can get it hot enough with it. Okay, so I got that solder there melted just enough to slide that filled coal out. So now my stud's free from my coals. So I should be able to now get the coals to come up and out. So I should be able to. At least turn them. There we go. And then lift the coils up and out. And you can see, you can see right here where our battery stud was soldered onto our field coils. And here you can see the actual brushes themselves have these long wires that are going to be soldered inside of here. On a six volt, you'll have two little shunts on either one of these coils you just solder your brushes to that but being the 12 volt they are different so now the last piece to come out is going to be a very hot battery stud and there it is and you can see you agree right there where the solder joint was. And then you got one little more insulator, which is a pretty sure that's a piece of ceramic because I had it glowing cherry red. So there's the case of the starter. And we'll get the case, the brush plate in the end cap as well as our three bolts and our field bolts all sandblasted cleaned up and we'll be ready to start putting this thing back together all right so to start rebuilding this thing first thing i'm going to do is change my brushes out on my field coils. Now, to do that, 
I'm gonna have to splice them in. Okay, the reason I gotta splice these brushes onto the field coils, this is how long they are in the kit. However, you can see this one's way shorter than both of them. So that one there was actually pretty close, but it's still too short. So the way that I'm gonna do it, I have these little furls here that I've cut from some butt connectors. And I'm gonna just crimp them on to my brush, cut the old brush off, and then crimp that to that. And then I'll come back and solder it together and get a good connection. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we got some insulation here, it might be RF insulation, I don't know. But I'm gonna take and see if I can pull these clamps off of it. Because hopefully I can be able to reuse that. And I gotta determine where my brush wire is gonna run to. It's okay to have it a little bit longer, but definitely not shorter. See, and this one's gonna come to about right in this area once I get the crimper on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it flush right now. So I'm gonna take and slide this sleeve up. I'm going to go ahead and cut these coals right here. I'm going to take these two wires. And get them into my shrink, or my crimp connection. Okay, it looks like these things are so big that I'm not going to be able to do it as one. So we'll have to do them as separate. So, with that being the case, I'm going to go ahead and crimp it onto my brushes first. Okay, and it doesn't matter which one's where, because you know, all this stuff is connected anyway. So I'm going to put that on there and just crimp it down. And that's a good solid cramps. So now let's solder it in. Not one of my best soldering jobs. I'm 
but it does work. Okay. And now I've got that solder fed all the way down into the crimps. Let that cool off a minute, and then I'll slide the sleeve back down over. And then this brush is installed. So kind of screwed up on this because I figured I could use one connector. So I got this big ball here. I should have, I could have staggered them and I wouldn't have had this issue, but I was not expecting to having to do two uh, crimp connections. Expecting just one, and that's made this difficult. So on the other side, or when I do the other one, I'll definitely stagger them so I don't have this big bulge here. Okay, and then I'm going to take my little clips, put them back on it. And that's just to kind of secure it in place. Okay, so there's our first brush changed. So now we'll do the second. And I gotta see if I can find me another crimp. So I'll get that changed and then we'll continue from there. Okay, I'm finishing up soldering this right now. As you can see, I have. Ooh, that's still warm. I got a crimp sleeve here and a crimp sleeve back here. That way they're staggered instead of on top of each other. So whenever I slide this over here and finish soldering this one, they'll be a lot smaller. And doing it this way, I was actually able to get a lot better solder joints too. Something that I'm more of my normal kind of work. <laughs> So I was able to get that to flow down into the connector. Like I said, I'll let that cool, then I'll put the little clips back on it. Then this piece will be ready to go back into the housing. And I'll have to switch to my little torch to solder that thing back on. But I'll go over that here in a minute. Still warm. And then you can see the difference there between the connections here and the ones here. Like these, you can't even tell they're there. Okay, so there's our new brushes installed. Like I said, the other ones, they bolt on, so it's not an issue. So there's our freshly painted, or cleaned up, painted, blasted, however you want, order you want to put it in. Starter housing. And by the way, the one thing I didn't mention was the rebuild kit, Tesco SRK403. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and slide in the new battery post. And this thing is oval shaped and keyed. 
you got the post, a washer, and the plastic insulator. And that's going to slide in here. Then we have another insulator and a washer. A lock washer and then the nut. And we'll go ahead and snug this down. Now we're going to take these field coils. We're going to slide them down in to our starter housing. And then we're going to take and spin them to where their lead goes into the battery terminal. Okay, so now I have it through the terminal. Now I'm going to go ahead and install my first, I don't know what you call this, iron bar basically, into this first, first coil so I can align it. So we're going to stick that down in there. Get it lined up with our hole and put our screw into it. Okay, so once that one's installed, we know that we are good here. Now I can go ahead and tighten this up a little bit. And that'll get everything lined up. And it'll be ready to solder it. But before I solder it, I'm going to go ahead and put in my iron bars on all my other coils. So everything's in alignment. Okay, so there's three fixed coils into position. And like I say, the reason I don't have that other one there is just because it's going to be right here where I'm going to be soldering. The soldering this is going to be a challenge because it's going to take a lot of heat. And I've got some pretty small solder. But I'm basically going to go in this groove go around the poles and then come down here and try to get as much on the bottom as I can. Okay, I see a problem I don't like. That's kind of a pain in the hind end because I'm gonna have to disassemble most of this. This terminal, the replacement one, this piece is plastic. This one's like ceramic. The replacement one's melting. So, I might have to disassemble what I've got and go back and change out that piece of plastic for the ceramic one. So we're gonna put the original ceramic one back. Then our insulator and washer and Lock washer and then the nut. We'll spin our field coil up into place. Put our iron core back on. We'll go ahead and put our other two back as well. Okay, so GoPro got too hot. But I'm going to go ahead and get this soldered up. You can see the solder right in there. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and hook up 
the last filled coal. And we'll tighten them down. And then we'll go ahead and tighten down our stud for the final time. Okay, so now there's this little wire right here. It's going to come over here and ground right here to our ground brush, like so. The first thing I'm going to do is come in here and just kind of clean off some of my paint just to be sure I get a good ground. So we'll take our screw, slide it through, slide our field coil ground on, and then our brush. Okay, and then we'll come over here and we'll do the same thing to our other side. Since we have this brush going this direction, we're going to also keep this one going this direction because our brushes are going to alternate. So now we can go ahead and put on our brush plate, but before we do that, we got to put the new bushing into it. Now in your rebuild kit, you're going to have two separate bushings. There's a long one and a short one. The long one replaces this other partially short one. Small one's the same size. Now when you install this, you need to install this a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch below the top surface. Which is something different from usual because usually you install these things flush. Where'd my hammer go? <laughs> So there it is, flush. Now I've got to change the drivers to actually get it further down in. Okay. Now before you put that on there and get everything situated, I'd advise you to go ahead and check it against your armature to make sure you didn't mushroom it. So my armature just happens to be sitting right here. And mine slides in. Now on the brush plate, if you look at the plate, you'll see two insulators under two of the brush holders. Those are your two on your field coils. The other two are your grounds. Okay, on this rear plate, that's going to take our larger bushing. We're going to install it until it's flush with this back edge. Let's set that in there and So there's my bushing flush with the rear. Let's go ahead and just slide the armature in. Okay. Before I put this back plate on, 
I want to grease the shaft right here just so that's not a dry running bearing and then one other part to put on before the back plate is going to be thrust washer there's two different sizes I don't think it matters which one goes where if anything I'd put the big one up there at the brush plate which is what I'm going to do and that just will slide on up against the back of your armature I had to sand on that bushing in there just a little bit get that to slide up onto my armature but it's up in there and it's nice and tight well, we're ready to come in here and start working on our brushes all right well first thing I want to do is go ahead and grease up the armature shaft here and we'll put a little bit on the back side of this brush washers to help hold it in place and we'll slide it onto the end of the armature shaft there's a little notch right there It's like you got these little notches on the front. There's one single one over here by itself. That actually is going to line up right here at the top of the starter. These brushes have these springs on them. That'll go in here and lock in these little tabs. And I've actually seen somebody do this where they locked them in here, reached in here and pulled them out to the side, stuck the brush in there and put them back in. So I'm going to go ahead and put my springs in there and just crimp down the little ears. So I know this is all hard to see. It's all black. But I'm going to slide that into the little ears right there. Lift it up and over the brush plate so it's into the groove. And then crimp these little ears down. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for all four brushes. Install our plate. Put our bolts in it. Now we'll come in here and we'll pull back on the brush spring and put our brushes in. And I highly doubt I'll have that a good video of that just because of the nature of it. I hope that camera up there can see it, but I just lifted that spring back with a bent screwdriver. You just need some kind of a hook tool. I used the pliers to line that brush up and slide it down into the holder. And try to keep the spring off of your wiring, if possible. It's not going to cause any electrical issues. It's just more of a wear issue. So there's now all of the brushes installed. So now I can tighten up my little front bolts right here. And these bolts just need to be snug down. They don't need massive torque. Okay, so once you get 
your brush is installed, go ahead and just spin your starter. And make sure everything moves nice and freely. Which I currently have the shaft locked in the vise with just a little punch to help hold it in place. And mine spins. Nice and easy. So the next thing I'm going to do is put on the band. And like I say, this one had a gasket on it. So I just have some 164th gasket paper. We're going to set that on there. And then we'll take my band and slide it over. And get all this stuff centered up. And then we'll tighten down the band. It's going to get that snugged up a little bit. Now I can get my gasket sit properly which is proving to be a real pain in the hind end it's be easy with some gasket tack on it but I don't want to put any of that on here. Although you can if you want to. Okay. Mine kind of poached out down here at the bottom where the bolt is. Right in there. So I'll probably just come in here with a knife and maybe just cut this out. But there's a starter rebuilt with the exception of putting the Bendix on it, which is pretty self explanatory. If you watch from the beginning, just slide it on, pull the little sleeve down, and push the pin in. The only reason I don't have mine on there yet is because I do want to bench test this. To bench test this is pretty simple. Hook your positive right here. Hook your negative down here on the case. And whenever you touch one or the other, this thing should spin. Since there's no solenoids or anything like that on this starter, as soon as you make the complete circuit, it should spin. If it don't, something's wrong, you'll have to tear it back apart and re-examine something. Which I can tell you, you can kind of see how boogered up my bolts are. I had to take mine coils in and out a few times because they were dragging against the armature. So that may be your problem. If you can't spin yours. But it's time to go get this one put back on the tractor. <laughs> 